Oi, Zah! Huh? Yeah. You're not planning on opening room 237, right? No. What's in room 237? Nothing. Just stay away from room 237, okay? Anyway, back to work. Hello? Hello? <laughs> <sighs> well, time to make the most of it. <sighs> okay, so I use a lot of Apple products. An iPhone, a MacBook, and an Apple Watch. But I don't use everything. I have a smart TV at home. It has all the TV apps that I want, so there's no real need for me to get the Apple TV 4K. And if we wanted to watch something our TV couldn't offer, we would HDMI it with a laptop. You know, like a caveman. And now that I'm stuck in this room with the Apple TV 4K, I could try out something more modern and less clunky. The box comes with this sleek and tiny Apple TV remote, a power cord, a lightning cable to charge the remote, and of course, the Apple TV 4K. But there's still something missing in the box that I need. An HDMI cable. It's incredibly annoying that Apple just left us like this. Assuming that we have our own HDMI cable, I had to use my own Nintendo Switch cable for it. Once you've got all the bits ready, you just plug them into your home entertainment setup and you're good to go. Okay, so before we start, I'll address a question that you might have. What's the difference between the Apple TV and the Apple TV Plus? It's a little confusing, but first off, the Apple TV Plus is Apple's own streaming content platform, kind of like Netflix or HBO Go. As for the Apple TV, it's a TV box that lets you watch movies, shows, listen to music, and all sorts. Like the Mi Box or whatever box that you have to watch your streaming content with. And we have the Apple TV 4K, which can let you stream in 4K. <laughs> the Apple TV's speciality is its four main apps, Apple Music, Apple Arcade, Apple Fitness, and of course, Apple TV+. Even for me as an Apple TV user, I never felt the need to subscribe to any of these services. Instead of Apple Music, I use Spotify. I don't feel the need for Apple TV Plus because I already don't utilize the Netflix account I already have, so why add more? I don't see the point of Apple Arcade and I certainly do not feel the desire to use Apple Fitness. But let's try all of them out anyway, mainly because I don't think anyone is out there to save me right now, so let's go. One of the first things I was impressed by was the tiny Siri remote that comes with the set. Sure, its small size would mean that it could easily get lost in the black hole that are your couch cushions, but I didn't really need any other TV remote besides this one. And if you miss using the circular touchpad of the iPod back then, you'll love using this. You can control and choose what you want by sliding your thumb around the pad instead of pressing buttons. Plus, when it's too bothersome for you to actually type in on the on-screen keyboard with your remote, you can just press this microphone button and just uh, speak directly to the microphone. Bridgerton. Another impressive feature on the Apple TV 4K is the way that it balances color. Apple TV will automatically measure the color response of the TV that you're using and calibrate its output. Under calibration, you can just set it up with your iPhone. So you go down to settings and then go to audio and video, video and audio, go down to calibration, color balance. And then uh, once your iPhone is connected to the Apple TV, uh, this will automatically show up like the color balance feature. Press continue and then you can just kind of follow their instructions and just put your iPhone down to the front and it will automatically measure. And it's all good to go. Let's compare the results. There, so this is the balanced. Uh, colors and this is the original 
so there are slight differences to it. So how it works is that the phone's front camera helped determine the accuracy of the colors. So anyway, let's go binge some content! Well, I've only had the Apple TV Plus for a while, but the main issue is that there's barely anything to watch. And that's because they're all Apple TV originals. So there are some pretty good quality stuff on here. Coda and The Tragedy of Macbeth are both new movies that have Oscar credit. They've also got several creator shows that some of my favorite creators have been involved in, like Central Park and Mythic Quest. And with the 4K aspect of the Apple TV 4K, you're able to stream the content in crisp, 4K with Dolby Vision. In Plain Talk, the visuals were crisper and more vibrant, and the A12 processor also helped content load much faster than I was used to. It's pretty cheap at 19 ringgit 90 cent a month after the free trial. And if there's something you're itching to watch but don't have access to, Apple TV Plus can give you the option to rent or buy the movie or show. That can be extremely convenient, but costly. However, you do get to keep the ones that you buy and half river in case you want to watch something comforting on a rainy day. But as a full on replacement for streaming giants, totally not worth it. There's just such a bigger selection of content elsewhere, like on Netflix, Disney Plus Hotstar and HBO Go. And you can also download those as apps on the Apple TV. There isn't really a need for Apple Music for me. I can just download Spotify as an app on the Apple TV itself, and I can just easily play music and listen to podcasts there. So, what's Apple Music got that Spotify doesn't? Well, Spotify has recently had beef with tons of artists, including basically every comedian and even Joni Mitchell after Spotify defended to keep Joe Rogan on their platform. There are also a lot of artists that I love, like Joanna Newsom, who despise Spotify and would rather put their music elsewhere. Your music is not on <laughs> Spotify, why not? Um, well, I think Spotify as a business model is not good. So, if you want the tracks that aren't available on Spotify, Apple Music is the way to go. I even separately bought a Joanna Newsom album through Apple Music for whenever I want to get my Newsom on. So, there are minimal differences between Apple Music and Spotify. You can jam with lyrics when you play songs on Apple Music, but Spotify isn't able to, despite it being able to do so on my iPhone. As for sound, it's only really as good as your TV set sound system. But there is a special audio section on Apple Music, something you can enjoy with your third generation AirPods, AirPods Pro, or the AirPods Max. So that's something for the audiophiles, I guess. Otherwise, as a normie here, I don't have any complaints. And honestly, if you already have Spotify or YouTube Music or any other music platform, you don't have to bother with Apple Music. I mean, it's just a music streaming platform, although it is one of the music streaming platforms that a lot more artists are okay with. I have sometimes been tempted to get the Apple Arcade solely because I want genuinely great games on my iPhone or my iPad. I heard great things about Sneaky Sasquatch and Cozy Grove, but I wasn't convinced to get the whole Apple Arcade platform just for a few games. But now with the flat screen and the Apple TV 4K, maybe it will be worth it? Okay. Wait a minute. I'm connect a compatible PlayStation, Xbox, and Ah! So I guess if you don't have a game controller already, you're not able to play the majority of the games on here. They don't even accept Nintendo Switch controllers. There are some games you can download that you can play with just the Apple TV remote. You can play Sneaky Sasquatch, What the Golf, and some other cute and casual games, although the remote control made it a little hard for me to move the characters. It really isn't made for video games. I would instead recommend using the iPhone as a remote, as it can be used as a universal remote controller when connected to the Apple TV. You can control things way easier in game. I never experienced any lagging playing games with the Apple TV, and it seems like you can do so much with its A12 processor, 60 frames per second, and up to 2160 pixel resolution. 
It's just that the remote controller itself isn't a great game controller. And if I want to play a majority of the games on the Apple Arcade, I'd have to get a controller for a console that I don't have. And will the Apple Arcade replace Nintendo Switch as my main gaming platform? Hell no. As a super fit fitness model for fitness, I don't feel the need to get the Apple Fitness Plus because I'm already so fit. But for this video, I will try it. <sighs> Let's go. What sets the Apple Fitness Plus platform apart from like YouTube workout videos is that you can connect the workouts with your Apple Watch. See, it can already kind of like, look at my heart rate, <laughs> sorry, damn I. Um, the amount of calories, I think one calorie is pretty great already. And uh, the amount of time, and you can see my movement, movement rings already there. That's pretty great. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh God. <laughs> I'm not even doing anything. So let's say if you want to work out with a partner, even though the partner has uh, their own Apple Watch and their Apple Fitness account, there's no way to put like two bits of info on the TV itself because you aren't able to sync them. So even if you are in the same household, um, you aren't able to work out together technically and that kind of sucks. But, you know, if you're alone, here we go. There are some workouts that don't need equipment or something minimal like a yoga mat. But there are also classes for rowing machines, treadmills, all sorts. I tried a few classes so far and my favorite ones are the hit and core ones. You can also choose classes based on the type of music you're feeling like throwback hits or even country. So here's the thing, because, because they have the same trainers sometimes every day or every week you can choose your classes based on your favorite trainer this is bettina she's my favorite and uh she keeps my core tight my apps tight <laughs> i found that it's definitely more worth it to get an apple fitness plus pass if you have the apple tv i tried having a membership without one and to connect it to even my macbook is very very difficult it can only connect to either the Apple TV or the iPad and iPhone. And I cannot imagine trying to have fun looking at such a small screen to try and copy the workouts. Well, if Apple can make it easier for me to connect to my laptop, maybe I'd be into it more. The Apple TV 4K is a luxurious item that you might not have the need for if you cannot afford it. But then again, you can say that for virtually everything that Apple has to offer, and that's both a good thing and a bad thing. Besides enjoying the content by Apple in crisp 4K, it's got great color and a super easy way for color calibration, something that a lot of people might not know how to do too well. You're also able to download other apps like Netflix, Spotify, and HBO Go. You can also airplay the content from your other Apple devices right onto your Apple TV when you need it. But with all these neat features, is the Apple TV 4K even worth it? Let's first go over how much it is. This 64 gig version of the Apple TV 4K is the most expensive one at 949 ringgit. A version with half its storage, 32 gigs, is 849 ringgit. That's a lot of money, and you can get a 4K Xiaomi Mi Box for about two to 300 ringgit, a small fraction of Apple TV's price. I can't say that I'm surprised. It's a premium price, but for a premium product. I can't say that any of us really need something like this, even if you're an Apple user using more than one Apple product. But having one is just so, you know, it's got that Apple sheen that you wouldn't really find with any other non-Apple products. The smoothness, the sounds, everything about it, there's just nothing like it you're basically paying for the high-end Apple experience. And if you do get your own Apple TV 4K, I would recommend getting the Apple One plan instead of subscribing to each app individually. You'd get Apple Music, TV
TV Plus, Arcade, and 50 gigs of iCloud storage for just 19 ringgit and 90 sen a month. But if you want Apple Fitness in the plan, you can go with the Premier version for 69 ringgit and 90 sen a month. For this one, you can share with up to five other people. So individually, you'd only have to pay 11 ringgit and 65 sen a month. If you can find people willing to share with you, of course. In my opinion, you don't really need to get it if you don't want to, because you can just use the Apple TV box as a regular TV box. But getting the monthly plan with all the apps will help make the Apple TV 4K even more worth getting. Well, the takeaway is, is that you won't even be looking at this as an option if you're looking at the price tag. So if you'd rather save a few bucks, something like a Mi Box or a Mi TV stick would be your best bet. But it probably won't feel as nice as this. Also, most smart TVs have similar functions anyway, but if you do own a dumb TV, getting the Apple TV 4K would be a terrific but expensive upgrade. Why? What did I say earlier? Stay away from this room! Uh, it was a mistake! I, I'm sorry! <laughs> Here's Ryan! Heheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheheh